Hi, it's the Constant Angler. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about my RAS and bass rods that I use in local estuaries and around the coastline. So if we start off here, we have a Sakura Trinis long range series rod. It is seven foot eight. And if I zoom in here, you'll be able to see the actual model. It is the TRSL. 782 ml lure weight 5 to 21 grams line test 6 to 14 grams i don't pay particular attention to the line test i must admit it's more the lure weight i'm looking at which is 5 to 21 grams so this is my light setup paired to that i have a casking kodiak 3000 reel beautiful reel lovely and smooth never skip the heartbeat uh, the rod's going to set you back about 150 pounds so this is one of my more expensive rods the reel is going to set you back if you can still find them around about 50 pounds if you can't find the kodiaks their replacement is basically the sharky three i have those and they are equally as good so if we talk a little bit more about the rod and well and the reel what i'm using it for i'm using it in the local estuaries for bouncing soft plastic for bass sight fishing for bass using your standard hard surface and subsurface lures it's a nice balanced outfit i've balanced the rod up better by adding some extra weight into a butt cap that i've brought and then taped on i'll show you that in another video and i've got 15 pound line on this reel we have a 12 pound ferrocarbon leader that's about right for what I'm doing in the estuaries. I could use this for ras fishing, but uh, I find if I'm fishing for large ras, it's a bit undergunned. It will do it, but if you hook a real big ras, you're going to struggle. It's a beautiful rod, as I say, it's about 150 pounds and the reel is about 50 pounds. So that's a 200 pound outfit. So one of my dearer outfits, but I particularly like Secura rods and casking reels. So stepping up, we, if you see my videos, you will uh, recognize this setup straight away. This is my bread and butter rod setup for RAS and for bass. So it's the Savage Gear Finesse. If I can find, there we go, let's move in. You'll see it's eight foot three. It's 12 to 35 grams. Lines eight to 14 grams. Obviously a two section rod. To this I've attached uh, a Daiwa Ninja NJ3000BG. I have done a review of this on my channel so you could look it up. It's not an expensive reel. This reel will cost you around 35 to 50 pounds. The rod's not an expensive rod. Well not what I consider an expensive rod. It's around 90 to 110 pounds at the moment and I've even heard that they're bringing out a new model so I might be interested in that. The rod has Fuji K guides or copy and uh, this rod was actually made for fishing soft plastic so as a ras rod it's perfect has a beautiful sensitive tip tapering down into a relatively strong beefy butt section of a rod this isn't a bass wand it's the rod i use for bass, most of my bass fishing open coast bass fishing anyway it does it. It's bomb proof. I chuck it around the rocks, or I don't chuck it around the rocks, but it does everything I want of it. It doesn't break. I've had more expensive bass rods. Tips can go quite easily on them. Uh, could well be me. I'm not the best at looking after my gear, but uh, yeah, it's a great rod for the money. It does the job. It will pull pretty much any rash you're going to hook in and the reel the same it has a nice drag on it it's quite a nice looking reel it's amazing what you can get for the money i don't know how many bow bearings it's got on it It'd probably say on here somewhere it doesn't really matter it comes with a spare spool not with the gold accents but a standard spool colored spool black spool and it's done the job for two or three years and it's still going so uh, very impressed with the reel it's not the smoothest it's not tight but it does the job paired with a rod i haven't got to worry too much about fishing on the rocks with that. This has caught me lots of bass, lots of wrasse. It's caught me bass up to about seven or eight pound. 
Uh, these rods, tell a lie, it was a different rod. It's got me bass to about five pounds, this rod. And the reels pulled me in ras of similar size. So it's doing anything I ask of it at the moment. Great pieces of kit. So we're coming to some newer gear now. <clears throat> You may have seen on my channel, I've done a review of the Pen Slammer 3, 3500 reel. It's a stunning reel. It's a bulletproof reel. You can go in the surf with this reel. You can get it soaked. Uh, I wouldn't advise sticking it underwater and winding it underwater or leaving it underwater. It's not a van style. It's a reel that bridges the gap between your normal reels, spinning reels, and your van styles, the totally waterproof reels. This is certainly splash proof. I've dropped it in a rock pool and it's still going strong. I've not done a lot to it to service it. I've had it about 12 months now. I wouldn't say I've had 12 months of use because we've been uh, locked down for a while. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the reel too much. You can see more of that on the review I've done. But let's talk about the rod I've paired it with and why I got this rod. So the rod is a Sakura Species Sea Bass Saltwater Game Rod. Hopefully you can see that. Nice bit of sort of orange color there. Uh, it is an SPZS 802 MHS. A medium heavy sport action, I guess they call it. Usually the S on the end stands for that. Maybe it stands for salt water, I don't know. It's eight foot long and it deals with lures or lines of eight to 20 pound. And so it says, 14 to 60 gram. Now we'll talk about the rating on this rod because I don't think it's a 60 gram rod. I bought this rod when I went on a road trip with my mate Mike from Lure Fishing for Rass UK. Good Facebook group, great YouTube channel, look him up, give him a subscription. I had no intention of buying a rod. I went in a shop and as so often do, started a waggle rod. So I picked this rod up and I thought it's beefier than my finesse which was good. I was after a rod that was a step up from the finesse. Uh, but it's not too beefy. What I wanted was a rod that would cope for RAS, would, would do the job admirably, but I could also throw some of these larger metals like your larger Savage Gear Seekers, your larger Toby Lures, that kind of thing. There are marks I fish where I can fish for RAS in really heavy cover, but I can also whack out a metal or a big cotton cordial popping pencil lure and catch bass. And I wanted a rod that would do the two. I didn't want to have to take two rods when I went to particular marks like that. I wanted to take one rod which would do it and paired up with a pen slammer. I could use this in the surf. It's rating, yeah, I've done a bit of research. When I bought it, it had a tag on the eye as they invariably do and said it was a 10 to 35 gram rod. The minute I picked it up, I knew it wasn't. It's beefier than that finesse. Uh, I knew that straight away, so I didn't believe that, but I didn't believe the 60 either. I looked a bit online and I did find someone who rated it at, uh, I think it was 10 to 45 gram. I would say that's more about right, possibly even 50. I wouldn't say it's a 60, but as you all know, we've been stuck in and I haven't had a chance to use it yet. Uh, talking about actions of rods, it's a fairly fast action rod. It's still got a sensitive tip, but it's got a bit more beef in it. It still will bend down to the bottom. Now, some people think that's a bad thing. On a cheap rod, yes. I don't want it bending down to the butt cap or the reel seat when I've hooked something, you know, with just three, four pound rass. I hook a monster, then it's gonna bend down here a lot more. What you don't want with a rass rod, because of the way they dive down and say pollock as well, you can hook them under your feet and you hook a good rass under your feet and it's gonna dive straight down. If your rod is too fast actioned, it's either gonna snap the tip or it's gonna pull the hook. You want something that's gonna bend down into the butt a bit more and it's bent right over and it's gonna keep that hook in that fish until your drag gives. Uh, these fish dive pollock and rass, they dive so quickly it just game on straight away. And if your gear is not right, you'll pull the hook out, snap the hook link, whatever. So you want something that's got a bit of bending down into the butt, more progressive, fast action than a really stiff butt. This rod, you know, I haven't used it yet, 
but I think that's going to be the rod that's going to cover my heavy wrasse fishing and light metal fishing. I can just grab this rod I'm hoping and go, particularly matched up with the pen slammer. So there's my heavy wrasse bass rod. That is something a little bit different. Now you may have seen uh, on YouTube, on my channel, I have done a bait casting for wrasse video. In other videos I have used the bait caster as well. It's not my main form of attack, let's say. My spinning setups are. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about wind knots and things like that with spinning gear. If you've got the setup properly, good knot like the FG knot, then you shouldn't have problems. If you do, that you're doing something wrong or your gear's just not up to it. Bait casters take a bit more learning, but once you're confident with them, they are great bits of kit for fishing for wrasse, I would say up to medium range. If you're really proficient, long range. But I find a spinning rod so much easier to do that with, particularly because they're normally a bit longer and you can pick line up at long range on a longer rod than a shorter rod. I also want this set up for fishing in the estuaries for bass. Probably surface fishing for bass, you can get a nice TikTok going with a, you get a more of a direct feel with a bait casting setup and you can impart action a little bit easier, I feel. You can argue with me about that if you want, but this is personal taste. So that's what I've got it for. Estuary fishing for bass, wrasse fishing. The reel, I've done a review on my channel for already. You can look that up. It's Spartacus Plus made by Casking. Uh, 11 plus bearings, it's not an expensive reel. You can pick these up for 35 pounds on Flea Bay or AliExpress. It's done the job for me the two or three years. It's had pike to around 12 pound. It's had ras to over five pound. Uh, it's caught decent sized perch as well. I've got 20 pound braid on that, standard, same as I would on the uh, spinning rods with 15 pound fluorocarbon. This happens to be casking, super power. Cheap line, great line for ass in my general fishing. Uh, yeah, so it's a great reel. It's never let me down. It's dual cast control. Cheap. You don't, I don't want something too expensive in salt water as regards bait casters. I may get a Shimano and try and see how I get on. But all I do is spray this down. And a couple of times a year, I take it apart and just oil it up and make sure there's no salt water ingress in it. Uh, you pay particular attention to the spools tend to get it there where the spool sits in you might get a bit there i haven't with this one the only place i got any corrosion was just on the stem in there which was nothing at all which i wiped off and greased up and everything's fine so a great little reel casking spartacus plus dummy proud 35 pounds you can buy a couple if you want it the rod is something i've been recommended i've not used again because of lockdown but i'm expecting big things of it it's a surinoyer ProFlex 2, C702MH, hopefully that'll focus, and it will throw lures from 10 to 28 grams, so it's quite pokey, it's got a lovely wrap on it, it's a beautiful looking rod, micro guides, wrap goes all the way to the tip, which is a good thing, because some rods we've been finding late will snap where the wrap stops, so if the wrap stops here, they'll snap there when your hooks are decent. As I said, I don't know what this will be like. We'll know when we hook a five pound wrasse or a big bass and it hoops over what it will be like. But it's a stiffish, fast action rod. I wanted something a bit more fast action than my damn Yagi. My damn Yagi was doing the job, but it was a cheaper rod. This is an expensive rod, it was about 60 pounds. And it wasn't as fast an action. And I decided I wanted something with a faster action so I can pick up and strike that bit quicker. So set that hook that bit quicker, maybe not miss any bites. I don't think I was really missing bites anyway. I just, something I just felt I needed. But I wanted somewhere with a bit of poke. So this will do ideally for bass fishing in estuaries, wrasse fishing and heavy perch fishing if I want like light pike fishing. So yeah, although it's a fast action, it's 
got some bending down to the butt there, so I'm expecting big things for it. Beautiful cork handle and trigger grip. Pleased so far with it, but you know, the proof is in the pudding, isn't it? So there you go, there's the rods and the reels that I currently use or intend to use and why I use them. You don't have to have those rods. There are lots of rods on the market. I am generally paying about, well this outfit's just over a hundred pounds. This rod cost me, cost me 90 pounds. The reels, probably one of the dearer things I own was around 135, 150 pounds. And the other rods, similar give or take setups. You can do it on more of a budget. These days for around 100 pounds, you can buy beautiful rods and lovely reels. If you wanna go a little bit more expensive, that's up to you, you can spend three or 400 pounds. And if that's your passion and it's something you do, great. I tend to go mid-range as I can get more rods and reels rather than having to use one or two. I can get more specific rods and reels for specific purposes. So I hope that's helped you out. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, give me your feedback. Let me know what you use, what you think of those. Maybe you've got them and you use them and you think they're great, they're rubbish, whatever. I like the feedback. Don't forget to like the video and hit the notification bell, which will let you know of any future videos that I do. So once again, thanks.